Pessimistic by Hack Shuck. I give readings at psychic fairs. It's nothing fancy, just seven or eight little booths in my local town hall once a month. I predict the future, give advice, contact the dead, whatever. It helped pay the bills. Kind of fun, too. A reading isn't cheap. Maybe two hours pay working in a factory, which most people around her do for a living. I'd only get six or seven customers all night, including a shy regular named Bernard, who I sensed had a crush on me. One psychic, Martin, always had a huge queue of customers who leave in tears but return the next month and bring their friends, too. I asked him a secret late one evening while we packed away our booths. He said he'd tell me if I gave him a cigarette. It's simple, Martin said, whilst walking me to my car. I give them bad news. Every time. I foresee catastrophe. Misfortune. Stay vague, but menacing. That's my advice. Scare the suckers. Give them their money's worth. But what happens when they figure out that your readings aren't coming true? I asked. That's the beauty of it, he said, squishing out his cigarette. The idiots think that they've dodged a bullet. I tell them I'm having a vision of a car crash, and they'll start riding the bus. They're gullible and weak, and they've got no one else to turn to, since science is too sensible for these bozos. He didn't need paranormal powers to realize how shocked I was. <laughs> Don't believe me? He laughed. Why do you think I drive a Mercedes while you're going home in a rusk bucket? And, uh, am I getting laid tonight, or what? I declined his kind offer, but when I heard he'd landed his own TV show, I took a long look at my cheap shoes and decided it was high time I revamped my act. So at the next psychic fair, I dully dispensed doom and gloom. Telling Bernard, I felt a fiery inferno scorch his skin and that I envisioned only cold and silent oblivion for a very sweet elderly lady named Dot. A month later, my customers had doubled in number. Dot, wearing a stylish lilac tracksuit, told me she started to exercise fanatically. I smiled at the idea that I'd given her a new lease on life, and smiled even wider when counting my cash at the end of the evening. Martin wasn't there that month. I figured he was busy preparing for his TV career, but I was surprised that Bernard hadn't returned until I saw them both on the TV that night. Apparently Bernard had watched Martin walk me to my car and figure that we'd started a relationship and that he'd put a demon in me. The police weren't sure of Bernard's exact motives. He was undergoing tests. A detective wanted me to help them understand Bernard's rantings on the night he was arrested. It doesn't matter that I killed him, Bernard kept screaming. I'm going to hell anyways. She told me so. 